as promised, Canada's ambassador to the UN. Bob Ray is with us live right now from New York City. Ambassador Ray, good to see you. Thank you for making the time. Well, thank you, Vashi. It's good to see you. Uh, I, we listened into your speech in front of the UN, and, and I wanted to start off by asking you simply, why did Canada support this resolution now? I think the, the critical issues are what's been happening on the ground. Uh, the Secretary General invoking what's called Article 99, which is a rarely used um, power of his to bring something of immediate attention to, uh, to, to, the, to the Security Council and the General Assembly. Um, the, all the information we're receiving from all of the UN agencies, uh, the Red Cross and others about what is the humanitarian condition actually on the ground. Um, and as that situation has, has evolved, uh, and got worse, frankly, for a great many people. Uh, and the, num the, the, the sheer amount of destruction that's, that's underway and the loss of life, you, you have to say this has had the profoundly, uh, profound effect on, on, uh, on the region. It's having a profound effect on human rights, on humanitarian needs. Uh, it, there is a critical need for us to increase the provision of aid into Gaza. There's a critical need for us to be able to respond to the level of human suffering. And I think there is a, a, a need for a, a humanitarian ceasefire, humanitarian pause, whatever you want to call it. I think there's been far too much attention. The word ceasefire was the word that was used in the resolution. And I think the conclusion that the government came to was, look, um, whatever we do, we're going to be criticized one way or another. But the important thing is for us to be clear about the fact that there are limits to how far people can be pushed. Uh, and there's responsibility that Canada has to uphold international law and to uphold uh, the needs of people who are suffering. And that's, I think, what, what ultimately weighed most heavily in the government's mind over the last uh, 10 days. Is it Canada's view that those limits have been breached or that international law has been breached by Israel? No, I think I, I don't think that's a decision that, that any government can make. I think that's a decision that ultimately international authorities need to make. Uh, we do believe that the evidence is overwhelming that Hamas has committed uh, atrocities. I was speaking to a UN official today, and she was very unequivocal, saying that these are sexual atrocities that have been committed on October the 7th, and these are not words that people use lightly. Um, I think the, the the issue is is really the the importance of our looking at the humanitarian situation on the ground and how one can't just keep giving the same answers to the same question. One has to look at how is the situation on the ground developing, how is it changing, uh, and what more can we do as a country together? We did today together with Australia and New Zealand. I listened to your panel. I'm fascinated by the fact that none of the panel recognized that both Australia and New Zealand agreed with us on the fact that we needed to vote in favor of this resolution. And we needed to vote in favor of the other two amendments, which didn't quite succeed, just as our Canada's amendment didn't succeed the last time. Our position on Hamas has not changed. Our, our position with respect to the conduct of the war has not changed. What is, what is naturally going to evolve is we're going to have to think of more creative ways to intervene to deal with the immediate situation, and then to begin to look at a long-term political solution. But, we can't only be looking right. at military responses. We have to be looking at some political solutions. And that's something that Canada is very much involved in now. Sure, and, and I understand that. But you also mentioned in your speech that there were amendments that were proposed that did deal with the Hamas side of the equation, with the release of the hostages, with a call for them to, to lay down their arms. And those did not go ahead. Though Canada supported them, they did not pass, and they were not attached to the resolution. And yet Canada still decided to vote in favor of the solution. A a resolution, pardon me. I, I understand your point about uh, the public parsing apart words, but those two words, pause versus ceasefire, have taken on very significant and specific meaning in the discourse around this war. It is significant that Canada today voted in favor of a ceasefire without any mention of Hamas attached to the resolution, is it not? Well, uh, I think you have to look at, if you want to look at Parr's words, the word, the word that was used this time was humanitarian ceasefire, not a permanent ceasefire. So the humanitarian What's ceasefire the is designed... What's the difference, Ambassador? Well, the, 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 the difference is a humanitarian ceasefire is designed to deal directly 
with the humanitarian crisis that we're facing at the moment. And look, a ceasefire has to apply to both sides. Hamas has to stop fighting. The bombs have to stop dropping on both sides. The fighting has to stop in order to allow for an increase in humanitarian aid and in order to get the hostages out. Guess what? That's what Israel and Hamas agreed to do before. All we're doing is creating the frame for saying this is not something that can be dropped because of the significance of what is happening to the condition of the Palestinian people in Gaza. We can't turn away from this. We can't say that one set of lives is more important than another set of lives. We can all, you know, we can say whether it's 5,000 or 10,000 or 15,000, an awful lot of people have been killed and injured. Many, many people have been rendered homeless. I don't think anybody in Canada says we're going to sit back and do nothing and just wait and see how the war unfolds. And that's the best we can do. I don't think that's the best we can do. Um, there's been no stronger supporter of Israel on record in the last 30 years than myself. I just believe strongly that Canada has to has to look at this issue and in doing so, looking at Israel's long term interest in developing a strategy that actually has a chance of succeeding and receiving substantial right. international support. I, I just have a minute left before our show comes to an end, but I, I do want to be ask you to be specific. It, you, you, you discern between um, a humanitarian ceasefire and a ceasefire. What exactly is Canada's position? Do you want the fighting to stop permanently? Everybody would like the fighting to stop permanently. The question is under what conditions. What we're talking about now is a ceasefire that lasts long enough and well enough for us to be able to make sure that people are allowed to get out, that uh, hostages are allowed to get out, and hostages can, can, can be taken care of in a way that they should be taken care of. And that food and supplies and, and other and humanitarian uh, needs can be met in inside Gaza. Uh, that is that is a, those are critical steps. But as for the the longer term solution, that obviously requires a political solution. And as we've made it very clear in the statement that was uh, signed today by the prime ministers of Australia, New Zealand, and Canada, uh, we don't think Hamas should have any role in the future of of Gaza. Um, but we also think there should be a two state solution. And these are the ways in which we think we're going to get to a more permanent and, and durable peace. We're not going to get to a peace as long as you have terrorists able to take up arms against sovereign states. And we're not going to get peace until we have secure borders and boundaries that are internationally recognized. These are the steps that have to be taken. And it's going to require compromise and concessions from all sides. But okay. it's got to start somewhere. And first of all, it's got to start with taking care of of people's vital needs, which are really suffering at the moment. Ambassador, I have to leave it there. As promised, the show ends in about 20 seconds. Thank you very much for making the time tonight for us. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Good to talk to you.